Welcome to the Heal Thrive Dream Podcast, where trauma survivors become healthy thrivers. Each month will feature a theme in the trauma recovery and empowerment field. To promote your recovery, healing, and learning how to build dreams, here is your host, Karen Robinson, transformational coach and therapist. Welcome back to the Heal Thrive Dream Podcast. Today, our special guest is Allison Rothman. She is a body-centered holistic wellness coach and transformational group facilitator. She has over 25 years of experience studying and practicing somatic healing arts and therapy, yoga, meditation, authentic embodiment, and holistic healing, my type of woman. (laughs) Through her extensive studies and practices and experiences, she provides clients and students with the ability to tap into their innate inner resource and release debilitating life patterns in order to access their truth, power, and reclaim their body, mind, heart, and soul connection. In addition to her one-on-one work, she facilitates retreats, runs women's groups, which are both virtual and in-person. She's a writer, a speaker, Oh, and she also has a podcast um, called Embodied and Awake. So if you love what she has to say today, please consider um, visiting her podcast. Also, Allison lives in beautiful Boulder, Colorado, and she has a 13-year-old son. So welcome, Allison. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you so much, Karen. It's such a pleasure. Awesome. So I want to start by just telling you a little bit about our audience, our audience, our listeners, um, are generally career women, mamas who um, usually are type A, really hardworking individuals, and sometimes don't make enough time for themselves. I'm I'm sure you can relate to that. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I like to do is I like to invite women on the show and some men who are willing to tell a little piece of their story about their own trauma and their recovery, but also how they um, help others in their healing journey, which will be a really easy question for you. But maybe Mm -hmm. to start, is there anything about your background or past that you're comfortable with sharing that could help connect you to my audience? Sure. So, yeah, I, you know, when I'm, I'm almost 48 and when I was in my early twenties, I, uh, hit rock bottom and, uh, ended up checking myself into a residential treatment center for eating disorder recovery. And so that really, I had, was already a yoga practitioner and had dabbled in meditation, but, um, that's really where I got my, um, kind of jump start into holistic wellness and um, really changed the trajectory of my life. Um, gave me the, you know, the tools and the resources to move forward with life. Did that mean it was easy? Absolutely not. And really, um, uh, you know, over the years, there's just been numerous highly traumatic, you know, traumatic events in my life that um, have taken my practices and my experiences kind of the next level. Um, I came home to a house, my house on fire. I'm a full-time single mom. I was with my then, I think he was about eight, seven-ish son, um, house on fire, lost 98% of what I owned. Um, You know, being a full-time single mom, um, navigated the court system with my son's dad, which was highly traumatic. I had a near-death experience while traveling alone in Mexico. You know, so each time I went through something, it um, really propelled my practices to the next level and really forced me to, you know, walk my talk, but in like the most palpable and embodied way that I possibly could. Um, So, you know, that, you know, leads into this chapter of my life. And yes, I'm an entrepreneur, self-employed, still single parenting. um, And I feel like the culmination of these decades of practice and study have really uh, brought me into this place of feeling like, I I know how to navigate trauma in a way that is, um, 
you know, sustainable, that is aligned, that is empowered, that is embodied, you know, embodiment is like the basis of my work and business. Um, so I don't know if that's helpful, but uh, yes, that's a very. little snippet. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, th- I think those of us who've had, and most people have trauma, but some of us have it more than others, right? How do you show or demonstrate to your clients that you get it? Mm. You get their pain. Yeah, you know, that's that's a really good question. It's super interesting to even try to articulate. I feel like it's just in me. It's in my being. It's in the way that I meet people. It's the level of empathy that I'm able to connect to others from. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, my heart is just like so blown open to, um, you know, these women who are struggling with Mm -hmm. various degrees of trauma, you know, and yes, as you said, like, there's, there's different levels of trauma, you know, it's the whole big T, little T kind of thing. I mean, um, you know, I feel like my forte and what I really can get in, you know, dig deep with, with women around are these bigger life experiences that um, can absolutely cause, you know, all sorts of, you know, health and wellness issues, health issues in particular, you know, in if we do not deal with the potential PTSD, we can really end up um, suffering, you know, unnecessarily for a really long time. So it can really ridge into our being. So how I show them, I think it's just my presence and Mm -hmm. my, um, the way that I am able to show up for clients. Yeah, I think that's very well said. I kind of relate to it as, as, as people can smell it on us they, yeah. they smell the the authentic genuineness in in the work you know yes because there's nothing to f- fake about it there's nothing disingenuous Absolutely. about it you know so mm-hmm. it makes it more powerful yeah and also yeah go ahead. oh sorry, go ahead. No. <laughs> i was just writing night about yes we, you know, we just have these, you know, our individual paths are who we are. And, you know, that is what shapes our ability to meet people. You know, it's like, I can't fake it. I can't say that somebody else's approach to working with a woman unraveling trauma is wrong because that's their experience, right? But what I can speak to is when I think all of us can speak to what our experiences are and how we have navigated and moved through. And from that place, that's where the authenticity comes in. That's where the work becomes um, effective and really empowering because we get it in our bodies, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's where I was going to go. So the universe is working with us today. (laughs) Yeah. No. Um, one of the words in your bio that really stuck out for me because I think it's huge and it might, and I think you're probably a little um, more in tuned with how to describe it in a deeper way for women. And the word I'm kind of hooked on is the word embodiment. Mm -hmm. Because as a mental health therapist, a lot of my work in the past was on, well, it's still not, not in the past currently as well as, is the thought work, you know, the cognitions, we have around trauma and the belief system we have. And I do yes. believe that's really important. Yes. However, as we learn more and more about how trauma is stored in the body and the cells, I think the word embodiment is, is uh, huge. So I would love if you could just talk a little bit more about what that means. Absolutely. Yes. It, you know, it's such a good question because, you know, yes, we know the body and the mind are infinite infinitely connected and to me we cannot heal unless we do the work of dropping into our bodies because we can absolutely i'm a big meditator i'm all about working with the mind but if we stay up here that's where we're moving through life right we're not never dropping down and embodiment has become such a kind of overused term i mean especially where i the part of the country I'm in and, you know, the, this, this community, but to me, embodiment is about, um, us, 
it's about this bridging the gap between, you know, who we think we are, you know, the, this, this person that's separate from us and this person that is actually us, our true selves. And so when we meet our healing from that place of truth and alignment and integration, then like magic starts happening, right? And then we can really start to um, drop so deeply into who we are that there is no separation. And so to me, it's, that's where we come up, you know, we are able to create these sustainable healing paths rather than, you know, and it's not just a quick fix. It's like integrated in our being. So I hope that makes sense. It is early here. Still, I'm realizing my, <laughs> you're the first person I've talked to today. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was, I was on a podcast early this morning for somebody uh -huh. and he asked me first thing he says, how are you this morning? And I said, I woke up on the struggle bus, bus but I'm really fighting to come home. <laughs> it was so early. <laughs> So funny. I mean, it's really, I've been up, but it's just funny because I'm like, oh, I haven't like really formed a complete sentence yet today to anybody. So, um, so I hope that makes okay. sense. Yeah. You know, I mean, what I have known for myself is that highly traumatizing experiences can take us so far out of our bodies. Right. You know, I can use the example of being in this courtroom and um, being on the stand for three hours and. I exited. I was like gone because it was so excruciating and so damaging that I had to, because that is, you know, it's a whole fight or flight thing. I was, I had to get out of there or else, you know, I was going to like crumble in that moment. So then the work had becomes, how can I, how can we bring ourselves back into our bodies so that we can meet you know, whatever it is that is presenting to ourselves, we can learn how to feel all those feelings that we perhaps exited from because they were too excruciating. And from there, we start to move through life from this place of, you know, deep embodied alignment. Yeah. Yeah. That, <laughs> that, that, that version was, you know, for me, it clicked even more, you know, the, the embodiment is like, assembling back or there's another word that I can't put my fingers on. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to just skip my word, but you know what yeah. I mean? Like putting those puzzle pieces back together. Cause we get fragmented when we're in that Frag fight and flight and freeze Frag situation. Yeah. 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 It's like coming back into integrity. With Integration ourselves. was the word I wanted. Yeah. There it, yeah. came. Yeah. <laughs> it took a team. It took teamwork. <laughs> Real collaboration to get the integration. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. So it's like reorganizing our energy through our bodies. And when we can learn, and I'm not saying this is easy. This is a, a process. This is a lifelong, you know, um, journey. But when we can learn how to sit with ourselves and how to breathe into our bodies and how to, you know, access what's going on for us in the present moment over and over and over again, then we really start to heal. Then we really start to step into our true selves, um, not from a place of being wounded. I mean, the trauma is always going to be there, but it's just a matter of, of like, do we want to allow it to run the show or can we continuously work to separate ourselves from the trauma and come back into alignment with ourselves? Right. Great. <laughs> and so people who are not on YouTube, if you're listening to this podcast, Allison uses her hands a lot. And so <laughs> you're, you're missing out. You might want to jump to youtube too to see what she's doing because she's very expressive it's beautiful oh, that's, so funny. that's so funny yeah i don't even realize that i do it but thank you yes <laughs> and so you you mentioned also that you um, well i read it in your bio um that you do some writing where is your mm -hmm. writing and what do you write about well 
Um, I write about life. <laughs> I write about <laughs> the human experience of life. And I feel um, right now, I'm, it's just in my blog, but I have a book in the works. Yay. that I know it's been in the works for a really long time. And I, I committed to um, I re- my goal was by the end of this year, it may realistically be um, by mid 2023. It's a process, but mm-hmm. I have it all. I just have to put it all together, you know, but I feel like um, my gift in the writing is that I'm able to articulate the human experience in a way that is relatable, that is, um, you know, helps people to feel like they're not alone along their journey. And, um, you know, it's really taken, it's been a a huge outlet for me um, as I've gone through, you know, my decades of ups, downs, ins and outs. And, um, so I love it. And I send out um, newsletters every other week ish. <laughs> the summer changed a little bit, but mm-hmm. uh, every other week where, you know, I share. Um, and I also have been contributing to Brains Magazine, uh, a monthly article there. So I'm, oh, cool. you know, yeah. And I, I post on Instagram a good amount um, with some of my writing. Um, it's, so right now it's kind of dispersed. Um, but eventually we'll come together for like my book. So yeah, yeah make sure you keep us posted because our, our, the podcast episode's going to live forever. And so whenever the book is released into the world, I'm happy to add it to the show notes in the future. Ooh, I so appreciate anybody, that. anybody in our future listening to this and wants <laughs> Allison's book, it's going to be in the show notes. So you know, stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Also, but let us know your blog. So people who want to read about you now, how, how do they find your blog? Yep. So it's on my website, um, which is embodymylife.com. And it's fairly clearly marked (laughs) with blog. And uh, I have all the archives in there. Um, And they can also sign up when they go on my website, there's a pop-up to sign up and you get a free guided meditation and then you get the every other week uh, email. I'm very respectful of um, not abusing <laughs> my email list, um, but they are, you know, then you also know about the, uh, I have a retreat coming up. I know this is not launching for a while, but I have a retreat coming up in a couple of weeks and uh, several women's groups, um, uh, one launching, one current. Um, so by adding to the email list, you just get to know about all that stuff. So. How often yeah. do you run retreats? Well, pre-COVID, <laughs> I was running them um, a couple times a year and I was doing, you know, destination retreats, but also uh, day-long retreats here locally in Boulder. Um, COVID happened. Everything's kind of still trying to figure things out. But um, so I have not run one. I ran one last August, August of 2021. That was wonderful um, in Colorado. And then I have one at the end of July here, um, also in Colorado. I'm hoping by 2023 to get, you know, more consistent. I'd like to be running about two or three a year, but they're a massive endeavor, but they're amazing. It's a yeah. completely holistic experience, yoga, meditation, movement, dance, women's circles, uh, organic food, ceremony, ritual, nature, all of it. It's um, it writing. so yeah. lovely. Yeah, you sounds, and I want you to come. <laughs> oh, it sounds so lovely. We need more of that stuff in our life. So yes, um, you know, just keep me posted. Maybe I'll send it for the newsletter and I can update that in the show notes as well yeah so that, that's really cool really Yay. cool did I say that's really cool yet it's <laughs> I love that you did yeah. and I appreciate it thank you <laughs> one of the questions I love asking my guests too because I'm I'm a, a huge reader huge nerd mm-hmm. are there books on your path that have been very inspiring to you that you would like to recommend that could be about your work or maybe they're about something else. You know, the one book that's jumping out at me to say is um, it's a classic, um, The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. I actually have it. Yeah, sitting there. Um, to me, that book is um, 
it just, you know, it's like you read a paragraph and you're like, whoa, I need to like digest that. That was so deep. You know, I just feel like he explains the human condition and the human psyche in a way that nobody else has been able to. So, um, I always recommend that book. I mean, there's gazillions of books about, uh, somatic, you know, different somatic therapies, et cetera. But, you know, I, I don't know. I, I feel like we can read, we can do all these courses. We can, you know, study with this person and that person, but I believe we all have the like wisdom and medicine mm-hmm. within, and it's just about, um, slowing down enough. Mm-hmm. And as you brought in at the beginning, you know, around, um, type a, you know, go get them women, which I get it, but slowing down enough and learning how to trust ourselves and trust what is coming through us as that somebody somewhere needs it, even if it's just for us, you mm-hmm. know? So, um, I just like, am constant. I'm all about like the self-healing realm and empowering others to remember that in themselves and to really, you know, again, really trust that, um, which is coming through them as valuable and that they do have the answers within, but the untethered soul is wonderful. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I I concur and agree with you a thousand percent though, with what you're saying. I'm a big believer that our intuition, our soul has everything we could ever need and more. Yes. You know, that's our source. So yeah, I, I, I think that you said that really nicely. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So when you are working with women who are survivors, mm-hmm. what's one generally one of the first steps that you recommend either in your mm-hmm. practice or if you're like just encouraging women? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's, it's different for everybody. <laughs> So it's hard to say that there's, um, there's no formula here. You know, what I find is there's an overarching disconnect, you know, be it from their bodies, their minds, their hearts, their, you know, there's a story happening. So to me, I'm just like, okay, what does this person, this woman, I mostly work with women, you know, what does she need to access herself in this moment, you know? And so perhaps it's, okay, we're going to take some deep breaths and put our hands on our bodies, you know, before we even speak. Some women just need to talk, you know, they need to get this stuff out and that helps them to resource themselves. Some women need to get up and move, you know, some need to get on the ground and have me put my hands on their bodies, you know? So, you know, To me, it's about how can we get these women back into their bodies, get these women connected with themselves and out of the, um, the story and the, the pain and, you know, and sometimes, you know, often we have to go through it to get to the other side, you know, but not always, not everything needs to be recapitulated, right? Because sometimes making the, you know, recapitulating the trauma exacerbates things. So yeah, this is a such a long-winded answer to your question, but (laughs) you know, the baseline is, you know, I really sit with, okay, looking at this woman, feeling her energy, hearing her, you know, seeing what she has, what she's bringing to the table, what, what needs to happen right now to get her to access herself in this, even if it's for just a moment, that she feels that connection back, you know, it's like we're rebuilding muscles from deep within, you know, and when somebody has been in a state of trauma for a long time, they're so disconnected that it's hard for them to just, okay, all right, I'm going to take some deep breaths. And I'm going to be here. No, they're going to take some deep breaths. Maybe they're going to have a fraction of a, a second of presence, but then easily they're out again. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like, how can we just continuously drop somebody into their bodies so that they can feel that safety from within themselves and not from any external source. And so there's so many different practices to bring into that moment, but um, that's really where it always begins for me. Yeah, I think that's huge. So I I heard, you know, really connecting. Mm -hmm. 
mind, body, and spirit being yes. present with someone, helping yes. someone learn how to be grounded, whether yeah. that's a breath or hands on. Mm-hmm. There was something else you said that I that that was important. You can tell now that I'm I'm a middle aged woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am too. It's fine. Yeah, I know. It's oh, we're there. It was so great. And like, it's really good. I really (laughs) know it was a really good one, but I just can't quite remember it. Yes. Mm. Yeah, you know, I mean, oh, safety. Safety Safety was the word. Safety. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge. You know, because our nervous systems, anytime we have trauma, yes, here I go with my hands again. Now I'm watching (laughs) myself. Our nervous systems become very activated. So it's hard to feel safe anywhere, right? But much less in our own bodies. But that's the key to me to healing, you know, is to learn how, and that's through, you know, diligence of practice and a lot of work, but to learn how to anchor ourselves in that pool and that well of safety that's that's from within so that nothing can penetrate us, you know, we become impenetrable penetrable to the world around us, you know? Um, but again, it's a process. It is a process and it takes time. Yeah. Yeah. Beautifully said. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so for women who really resonate with your message, mm-hmm. with the embodiment, with the, the connection and learning how to be safe, mm-hmm. what is the best way to reach you to learn about your newsletter and retreats and your groups. Is that through your website? Is that how you prefer women reach out? Yeah. You know, I mean, through the website, they can also email me, um, Allison at embodymylife.com. I have a, um, I offer a free 20 minute uh, zoom or phone call, um, just kind of a, to just feel each other and, and feel if it's mm-hmm. a good fit to work together. And there's a link right on my homepage um, to set that up. Um, so I, I, you know, I just, I feel like this work is so personal yes. that it's important to have a moment together before diving in um, to just really make sure that, um, you know, we energetically are, are fit, you know, and I want to say that, Um, you know, and I believe that I said this earlier that it's not a quick fix, you know, that, um, this work takes time. It takes uh, a commitment, um, and a really strong belief in ourselves. Um, there's always, I give outside work to do. You have to be willing to, you know, get uncomfortable and to try some new things or else it's not going to work. It's not just coming to sit, you know, and just, talk and just you know that's that's so honest yeah yeah Yeah. research research shows that in session or talking through something is is not what moves the needle for lasting Mm. change it's it's Mm -hmm. practice exactly exactly and it just makes sense we're not gonna wake up one day and know how to run a marathon You, you have to practice right Exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, it's building these new muscles of, of being, you know, and I've had plenty of people who have come to me and they, they want, you know, oh yes, I'm committed, but they're not really willing to do the outside work. So we only get so far, you know, so um, I like to be upfront about that, you know, that it is, um, it's a, it's a crucial component and it's so worth the efforts. It's so, I mean, coming from somebody who struggled, struggled for years and years and years, so much pain, so much angst, not functioning, you know, to really committing to myself to do this level work. I know what it's like to get to the other side and it's so worth it. So that's my final little... (laughs) <laughs> it is worth it. it Allison, is. it was such a pleasure having you on our show today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Karen. So great to, to connect and meet you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening in today. Please join us next week, same day and time. Also, I would love for you to check out my website, healthrivedream.com.